It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Welcome to another episode here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. It is our mission to try to bring you some news you can use. Today is no exception to the rule. Follow me on Twitter, X, at the Mike Prince Show. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. and Visit our website at obnradio.com. With all that being established, let's jump right into today's episode. Hopefully you guys had a wonderful, relaxing Memorial Weekend and celebration of those who dedicated and gave the ultimate price for us to have and enjoy the freedoms that we have. And with all that, we want to give a congratulations also to the Grambling State Tigers. They were victorious over the Jackson State Tigers in the Southwestern Athletic Conference Baseball Championship game on Sunday. And they pulled off the 6-5 win, and they will move to the regionals, which will be hosted in their bracket by the Texas A&M Aggies from College Station. They'll be paired up with University of Louisiana, Lafayette, and the University of Texas. So it should be a very, very, um, uh, let's say, familiar battles between Texas and Louisiana. And I guess when you look at this thing with hindsight 2020, thank goodness for Grambling State representing the West, right? Because it appears that the East had dominance in baseball and softball in this year's events for baseball and softball tournament play. However, the Grambling State Tigers, number two out of the West, able to withstand the Eastern Barrage to up hoist the Southwestern Athletic Baseball Championship. But as we further look deeper into the philosophies, let's say, of the East and the West, could it be that the East is slightly advanced or is it just been the luck of the draw? We'll find out and try to dig a little bit deeper into that. But when you look at the East versus the West, the West heavy bats, the East a bit more pitching, some better defensive play, but to none, the Boar, the Grambling State Tigers had all it took to represent the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and we're going to wish them well along the way. Those may have heard our memorial release with Coach Olin Parker and the Southern University New Orleans Knights baseball program and the news breaking about the rebranding of the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference. They'll be now known as the HBCU Conference for the NAIA division play and even expanding and, and adding three more programs with the potential of adding a Houston Tillerson in the future. So it'll be very interesting to see the continuation of the soon-to-be-named HBCU Conference. And I'm sure that by now, those who remotely keep up with the NCAA are well aware of the latest, let's say, uh, demands, because that's basically what it is, that's going to be happening. And we're going to dig into this a little bit deeper later on throughout the course of the week but I just want to give you a summary how I'm interpreting what's going on on how they're going to do this split with this back pay and everything with the lower tier programs paying 60% of this out of control budget and that's not going anywhere and you might as well get used to that right now but the hidden message is truly this Uh, While we can cry wolf and say, hey, this is not fair to the smaller guys, shots have been fired, and you can take heed to it if you want. And the message is basically this. You're going to pay to play, or you're going to have to relocate. There are going to be no other options with the decision that has been made. That's going to affect not just HBCU conferences, but all other PWI conferences within that FCS structure. And the message that's being relayed, if you cannot afford to stay at the deep end of the pool, there are plenty of opportunities on the D2, D3 levels for you to continue to participate. And that's what the masses are saying 
whether they're overtly letting it be known, but the actions are definitely leaning in that direction. Want to know what you guys are thinking about it. We do have a 24-hour message line that you can leave your thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns about this matter or any other matter. That phone number is 720-721-1558. Leave your message at the beep. If you want to remain anonymous, you can also say that as well. But have any questions, concerns, be sure to let us know. And speaking of that, um, there were some people that were responding on what was fully funding mean when it comes to baseball in the NCAA Division I rankings. There are 11.7 scholarships, full scholarships available for all Division I programs. And within that 11.7 scholarships of availability, you have now the obligation to fill 35 slots. And however you can mix and match it is how you go. For the most part, um, majority of your FCS programs, and in particular of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, are in a range from six uh, scholarships down. You might have some that might have seven or eight, but no one are fully funded within the Southwestern Athletic Conference, at least last to our record and check. Um, so what they're basically saying is that we are all in the same pool we all are playing in the same sandbox. So we have to figure out some things uniquely, creatively, out the box, however you want to identify it, to try and overcome the obvious. An example of how this latest ruling is going to be, what's going to happen now, they, they, they could actually say, okay, we're not going to bind you guys to the 11.7 scholarships that are available. What we're going to do is give you let's say like a salary cap of X amount of dollar. And that X amount of dollar can be finagled and switched around to get whatever assortment of players that can spread out your 35-man roster. So basically, the, the needle has been moved again. And it's apparent that if we want to stay in the upper echelon, when I say we, I'm not just talking again about just HBCU conferences, SWAC, the MEAC teams and this, that, and the other. But if you're going to be in the FCS brand and wanting to play Division One ball, you're going to have to come up with more funding. You're going to have to do a whole lot more uh, a creative uh, luring of getting ball players to be a part of your program. Now, the good part about this is everyone is not going to be able to fit and everyone is not going to get paid on the brands that would be available for that level so through due diligence some um, luck of the draw if you would perhaps you can still put together competitive programming but as we mentioned a little while ago the alternative is either you drop down or you adjust to stay afloat so we'll keep you posted on how all these things fold and unfold and get unraveled this that and the other meanwhile we got a little bit more baseball left with the Grambling State Tigers, go and represent the SWAC well. We'll be gearing up for football season. We'll be hearing from Coach Northern. We'll hear from Ben, Jack, and even hear from Coach Petaway about the football season coming up and a whole lot more. I am going to exit stage left for right now. I do appreciate each and every one of you, your support, subscriptions, donations, everything that goes forward of keeping us afloat and abroad. Want to remind you of the opportunity to subscribe to the Twitter X handle at the Mike Prince Show. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. I've got to go. My time is far spent. So until the next time, you guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.